I think purple eggs would be dope. I would totally eat some purple eggs. Didn't fucking stop me. Serial killer tree? Okay. We'll find your serial killer tree and we'll kill it. Alright, let's go talk to everybody. I was on my way home from a trip to Logres, crossing the Aldina Plains, when I saw it. Rain was pouring as if from buckets, and the wind was so strong I could hardly stay on my feet. From the vast darkness of the sky, a monster of tremendous size descended, like the essence of the storm itself. A huge flying demon? At that moment, a group of exorcists leapt out from their hiding spots and began to battle the demon beast. But it met their swords with its fearsome horns, and a swipe of its tail threw the noble exorcist back. Horns? And a tail? Where did the demon go? I couldn't tell you. I was so frightened, I ran away and never looked back. I hope the Abbey can get rid of it, but the beast took out three exorcists with a single blow. Come to think of it, another person was there too. He faced the demon and told it to stop. Zavid. If you're going to the Aldina Plains, you'd better be careful. How do you know that's the Zavid just from him saying he faced the demon and told it to stop? Uh a big leap the water around here is ideal for producing wine and spirits I've been thinking about fermenting something new what will you make this region's specialty is berries so a berry wine hmm but the chilly air and level of humidity here should be just right for making an amber draft don't you think considering the geography around here the water must contain a high mineral content if you use it to make a rice wine, the taste will be unique. I've considered all those options, but I must create something that can surpass my greatest rival, Sleeping Princess. But that's nearly impossible to make. <laughs> exactly. Not an easy task, to say the least. Sleeping Princess is made by filling an emerald cask with water from an enchanted mountain spring and sitting it in direct sunlight for seven years. The water's magic causes it to change color each year. When it reaches the same deep green hue of the cask, it's ready. Solar fermenting, huh? It won't be easy to surpass a marvel of the winemaking world like Sleeping Princess. True, but I've finally found it. The ultimate stone. A gemstone? Will you make a cask from it? That would just make it an imitation. No, what I found can only be called a natural rock filter. You're filtering wine with a rock? Deep in the heart of these mountains, I found a stone that absorbs liquids. I tried using it to filter a berry wine. The taste of it was unbelievably crisp and bright. It preserved the luscious richness of the berries, while adding a clarity that left me breathless. I call it pure land wine. There is no better. May I have a taste? Uh, my apologies, but it took me ten years to make a single thimbleful. I drank that thimbleful for my tasting. It'll be about fifty years before I can make a decent batch. I doubt I'll see a full bottle in my lifetime. Fifty years, huh? That's sad. Meet you back here, then? I've never been so glad not to be human. Yeah, that sounds dope. You guys find my Take shit? a look at this. It worked! Huge success! Not a huge success. He didn't find my shit. Scout. You need sundries. We got sundries. Raspberries, strawberries, blueberries—they all grow in abundance around Stonebury. 
We even have a fairy tale about it. One day the ground was covered with so many fallen berries, they all became stones. Stone berries? Is that how the town got its name? The spelling has changed some, but yes. Berries are an important part of this village. We harvest local berries to make jams, pastries, gels, and all sorts of sweets. Berry-flavored gels! I've never had one. We've exported our jam and fruit for a while now, but our raspberry gels are still being perfected. Aw, rats. Are the vegetables growing in that field special, too? I don't think I've ever seen anything like them before. You've got sharp eyes. But that's right. They're a rare species of wild potato. They're red, and they're called radish bells. We discovered them in the mountains nearby. Sadly, the potatoes are actually highly poisonous. Really? But they look so good. They do. But the skin and the sprouts are toxic. If you aren't careful when removing them, it's poisonville for you. Deadly poison aside, they're sweet, fluffy, and go great with butter. And when they're fried nice and crispy, they're the best. So just skin them and sell them. What's the problem? Yes, we've thought of that, but the way they are now, you have to peel off quite a bit before you get to the edible part. Peel one as big as your fist, and all you get for your trouble is a bit of meat the size of an egg yolk. That's why we're selectively breeding them. One day, they'll have only a thin layer of poisonous skin. Why not breed them to get rid of the poison altogether? With no poison, bugs will eat them, and they'll be more vulnerable to cold and heat. With potatoes, as with people, getting rid of everything harmful isn't always for the best. Okay. So now we've talked to everybody. Go in the inn. Savid. Well, hello, sailor. Are you waiting for someone? Nope. Just saying a prayer for someone. Someone? Let's go. Clearly there aren't any blood wings here. You're just going to leave? I'm right here! Everybody has times they need to be alone. Fee. Right. Coming. Okay. What do you think he was praying about? Well, for so. one thing, he was drinking a bottle of Thorny Forest. Oh my! The drink you share with your special someone when you're going to be married for life! How romantic! But getting your hands on that stuff is no small feat. I can only hope I'll get a chance to taste it someday. That must have had an important meaning for Savid. That's why you left him alone. Don't read too much into it. You're Velvet, right? Huh, you must be the one who's seen the demon we're after. We saw a big snake-looking dragon fly over on the way here. Is that what you saw too? Yes, that's the one. It nests at the top of the mountain in Aldina Plains. It was just there. We went to look ourselves. No dragon. It only returns to its nest on rainy days. Rainy days, you say? Yeah. It's good timing, Aww. day. Just look at what you went and made the weather gods do. This doesn't bode well. Not at all. Thanks. We'll give it another shot. Sweet, let's go. Town is too wholesome for my taste. Hey there! Our meeting like this must be Providence Meow! We're in a hurry. Save it, cats. All the better, Meow! I've just stumbled upon a perfectly nifty piece of stone just for you! What's it for? <gasps> That's not a geoboard, is it? 
shit. Bingo! The I Ouija board. They were made by Norman Meowney years ago for surfing along Earth pulses, but I can't use it, so I figured I'd pawn it off on someone else who could, Meow. Wait, Norman made this? That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Don't be so mean! We're capable of exceptional things! Sometimes. And sometimes, when a Norman speaks their own name, the board springs to life and whisks its masters away at top speed! They'll even plow right through weak demons! You can say it's our masterwork, even if we sorta of stumbled on it by accident. Huh. Well, then I apologize. Alright. So we can ride this as long as we have Bianfu with us, right? Well, kind of. Do you have to use your true name to activate it? Not my true name, no. My Norman name. Wouldn't that just be Bienfu? No. Norman have a separate name that goes something like Norman so-and-so. It's almost more a title than a name. Often the name has something to do with what they're good at. Something like Attack, or Chain, or Aqua. Right. You could say names like Bienfu and Grimoire are more like stage names. I actually don't know Bienfu's Norman name, but I can't wait to find out. What is your name, Bienfu? <laughs> Come on out with it. We're in a hurry. Norman Brave. Whoa, look at that! Wait, Bienfu. <laughs> Your Norman name is Brave? <laughs> that is so deliciously absurd! Why do you think I've never told you before, Bien? <laughs> At least the board works, Meow. And if we get on this board, it'll move us around? Well, about that. The board propels itself by pushing against Earth Pulse flows. To do that, the board needs information on the flows. But this one here's a completely blank slate, Meow. First, you need to find the geo trees in each area. They serve as a conduit between the surface land and the Earth Pulses, Meow. Once you've actually located a geo tree, you can record that area's Earth Pulse data into your geo board, Meow. Got it. This area's geo tree is right over there, Meow. All right then. So long as we find more geo trees, we'll be able to use the geo board to travel much more quickly. Was I not literally talking about the last time we were walking around about some type of? quick travel that was going to get introduced in this game and when it was going to happen and literally we walk back outside and there's another quick travel I don't want to say I know too much about RPGs but There we go. You won't get any pity or compassion from me. <laughs> well, that's going to come in handy. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun to ride, too. I could get used to this. <sighs> I'm so worn out. I feel like I had to sprint the whole way here. Huh. It seems like operating the board saps a lot of energy from Bienfu. Even still, this board gives us a strategic advantage. Brave here will just have to bear a little exertion now and then. Yeah, Brave. Buck up. I believe in you. Be brave. Ah! Stop calling me that! <laughs> Oh shit. Alright, let's go. How much faster is it than actually just walking? It really doesn't seem that much faster, but I think it I can avoid battles. Let's get started. Or not. Oh, 
Your style. This is super ridiculous. Fucking Marty McFly over here, I got a bad damn hoverboard. Trick on the Down. 20 minute warning. 